Hello and welcome to the 2010 through through 2019 Gold Derby Decade Awards. We only get to do do this obviously every 10 years, and a lot of you voted a few weeks ago on nominations. And the past three weeks, you've been voting on winners. We've got 10 nominees per category, 30 categories, and you'll see the full list up on our homepage uh, immediately following this announcement. Uh, to hear here to announce everything today. Uh, for the TV categories, we've got Marcus Dixon, Paul Sheehan, Susan Wazina, and Daniel Montgomery, and I'm Chris Beecham. And we'll give Marcus Dixon the first shot at three categories. Yeah, so the very first category is going to be Best Animated Series. The nominees were Adventure Time, Archer, Big Mouth, Bob's Burgers, Bojack Horseman, Family Guy, Phineas and Ferb, Rick and Morty, The Simpsons, and South Park. And the Gold Derby Decade Award goes to Bojack Horseman. Which, uh, not too surprising since that show uh, has won our yearly award, I think for the last four years in a row. Uh, Simpsons actually finished second and Rick and Morty finished third. But, uh, but yeah, Bojack had a pretty solid, decisive win there. So moving on to reality host, uh, the 10 nominees are Nicole Byer, nailed it, RuPaul Charles, RuPaul's Drag Race, Ellen DeGeneres, Ellen's Game of Games, Heidi Klum and Tim Gunn for Project Runway, Jane Lynch, Hollywood Game Night, Amy Poehler and Nick Offerman, Making It, Jeff Probst, Survivor, Gordon Ramsay, MasterChef Junior, The Queer Eye Five, some from Queer Eye, and uh, Ryan Seacrest for American Idol, and the Gold Derby Decade Award goes to, no surprise, RuPaul Charles for RuPaul's Drag Race. Yeah, you know, RuPaul's also won that in our yearly awards for the last few years. Uh, second place were the Queer Eye hosts, and um, rounding out the LGBT top three, Ellen DeGeneres, actually, uh, Ellen's Game of Games. Uh, although I do think, judging from like the whole decade, uh, Marcus, I know you probably are sad that Jeff Probst was uh, was robbed uh, in in fourth place, but uh, not not, I was not how robbed. If he was in tenth or ninth, that'd be robbed. I think fourth is okay. Okay. So last decade, that that's not, <laughs> didn't deserve it for this decade. He's every decade. <laughs> um, and then rounding out the reality categories is reality program, and the ten nominees are the Amazing Race, American Idol, American Ninja Warrior. America's Got Talent, Dancing with the Stars, Project Runway, RuPaul's Drag Race, Shark Tank, Survivor, and The Voice. And the Gold Derby Decade Award goes to RuPaul's Drag Race. Another one that, that uh, was pretty decisive, um, but The Voice finished second, and it was so last decade, but Survivor finished third here. Nice. We finished our top three here. Amazing Race, which actually won the last decade award, uh, finished fourth for this decade. Which brings us into variety. Uh, I will be announcing uh, the, the three variety categories, talk series, uh, sketch series, and we have a variety performer category. The nominees for best variety talk series of the decade are The Colbert Report, Conan, The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, the Daily Show with Trevor Noah, Full Frontal with Samantha B, Jimmy Kimmel Live, The Late Late Show with James Corden, Late Night with Seth Meyers, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, and The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. And the Gold Derby Award goes to Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. Once again, uh, a show that has won with us in our yearly awards uh, for the last several years. Uh, Colbert Report finished second, and The Daily Show with Jon Stewart finished third. But John Oliver had a pretty decisive win here. Not surprisingly, Daily Show with Jon Stewart won the last decade. Um, which brings us to Variety Sketch Series. The nominees are Billy on the Street, Documentary Now, Drunk History, Inside Amy Schumer, Key and Peel, Nathan for You, Portlandia, Saturday Night Live, Tracy Ullman's Show, and Who is America? And the Gold Derby Decade Award goes to Saturday Night Live. Speaking of a show that is every decade, 
Um, we only had one variety program award in the last decade, and The Daily Show won it. So this is actually Saturday Night Live's first decade award from us. Uh, Key and Peele finished second, and perhaps surprisingly, Billy on the Street actually finished third. Um, which uh, I guess kind of makes sense because I, I really feel like this was the decade of Billy Eichner uh, and pop culture. So mm -hmm. good on him. Which brings us to best variety performer. Now this uh, this category includes uh, people from Saturday Night Live who over the years we would have put in our comedy categories. We decided to bring them all into their own variety performance for the decade uh, awards. Uh, so the nominees for best performer, variety performer of the decade are Alec Baldwin, Saturday Night Live, Billy Eichner, Billy on the Street, Bill Hader, Saturday Night Live, Keegan Michael Key, Key and Peel, Kate McKinnon, Saturday Night Live, John Oliver, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, Jordan Peel, Key and Peel, Amy Schumer for Inside Amy Schumer, John Stewart for The Daily Show with John Stewart, and Kristen Wiig for Saturday Night Live. And the Decade Award goes to Kate McKinnon for Saturday Night Live. And actually, uh, SNL swept to the top three. Kristen Wiig finished second, and Bill Hader finished third. So now we're going to move on to the uh, movie mini category, starting with movie mini supporting actor. The nominees are Matt Bomer in The Normal Heart, Sterling K. Brown, People vs. O.J. Simpson, Cody Fern in The Assassination of Gianni Versace, Martin Freeman, Sherlock, Connor Jessup, American Crime, Jesse Plemons in Fargo, Andrew Scott in Sherlock, David Thewlis in Fargo, Ben Wishaw in A Very English Scandal, and Bokeem Woodbine in Fargo. And the Gold Derby Award winner is Sterling K. Brown in The People vs. O.J. Simpson. Mm -hmm. uh, and followed in second place by Cody Fern for The Assassination of Gianni Versace, and third place Martin Freeman for Sherlock. Um, and they all actually won our individual yearly awards when uh, they were nominated for those. So uh, it makes sense. That, oh, actually, uh, I forgot. To, uh, ben Wish I actually tied Martin Freeman in third place. Uh, they had exactly the same number of points. Uh, so, so it's a tie for bronze. Uh, I was a little surprised Matt Bomer didn't do better, but he did round out the top five there. Oh, and Daniel uh, will announce it later, but there's two categories where first place and second place were separated by one vote. No. So, so no. stay tuned for those. Actually, I think, it was, I think it was one point, so it's literally one someone point, moving. One point because you got three points for first place, so if somebody just switched their – First somebody, and second so place. Like first and second place, it would have had a whole different outcome. Or second or third place. Yeah, that's it, it's kind of insane. Uh, it, nowhere near as complicated as the preferential ballot for the Oscars. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then on the uh, supporting actress side in movies and limited series, the nominees are Angela Bassett in American Horror Story, uh, Kathy Bates in American Horror Story, Patricia Clarkson in Stry and excuse me, Sharp Objects, Olivia Coleman, The Night Manager, Francis Conroy, American Horror Story, Penelope Cruz, The Assassination of Gianni Versace, Regina King in American Crime, Eliza Scanlon in Sharp Objects, Allison Tolman in Fargo, and Emily Watson in Chernobyl. And the winner was Kathy Bates in American Horror Story. Mm -hmm. Uh, and since we ranked the top three in, you know, to decide the winners, uh, I noticed that uh, 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 vote splitting wasn't, didn't really seem to be much of a factor in most cases because, you know, Kathy Bates was up against a couple other American Horror Story people. But uh, actually, Regina King finished second and Patricia Clarkson finished third. Uh, Allison Tolman finished five points out of third place. She finished fourth. Um, Francis Conroy rounded out our top five. So yeah, a bunch of American Horror Story nominees, but Kathy Bates won it. I'm so happy American Horror Story wins something with us, because, I mean, it literally started 2011, so it's been with us the whole decade. And you know, it's funny, uh, uh, Kathy Bates never won one of our yearly awards for American Horror mm -hmm. Story, but uh, American Horror Story did win three times with us, but the thing is, two of those went to Sarah Paulson and one went to Jessica Lange. And they were both leads for our purposes at the Decade Awards for American Horror Story. Well, speaking of leads, the nominees in the movie limited series actor category, 
Riz Ahmed for the night of, Darren Kress assassination of Gianni Versace, Benedict Cumberbatch for Sherlock, Michael Douglas behind the candelabra, Jared Harris, Chernobyl, Jarrell Jerome when they see us, Matthew McConaughey, True Detective, Evan Peters, American Horror Story, Billy Bob Thornton for Fargo, and Courtney B. Vance for The People versus O.J. Simpson. And our Decade Award winner in this category is Darren Chris. And this is a pretty good top three that I feel like is really kind of indicative of the decade because we had Matthew McConaughey in second for True Detective. That was kind of an iconic season of that show. And Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, third place for Sherlock. Uh, and even four and five were really good. Jarell Jerome, uh, the reigning Emmy winner, um, and Courtney B. Vance in fifth place. So uh, I really like the way that category came out. Although I would have put Riz Ahmed a little higher, but I'm quibbling. <laughs> <laughs> I think I had picked Courtney, so... At least he was in the mix. Um, movie Mini Actress nominees are Amy Adams, Sharp Objects, Claire Danes, Temple Grandin, Kirst, uh, Kirsten Dunst, Fargo, Jessica Lange for American Horror Story, Jessica Lange for Feud, Betty and Joan, Frances McDormand for Olive Kitteridge, Julianne Moore for Game Change, Sarah Paulson for American Horror Story, Sarah Paulson for People vs. O.J. Simpson, and Michelle Williams for Fosse Verdon. And speaking of vote splitting, it didn't hurt her at all. Sarah Paulson is the winner, and she's the winner for People vs. O.J. Simpson. And what's interesting, it didn't hurt Jessica Lang either, because Jessica Lang finished solidly in second place for American Horror Story, and... Uh, 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 you know, the other Paulson and the other Lang nominations didn't really factor in quite as much. Uh, Amy Adams rounded out our top three for Sharp Objects, and the reigning Emmy champ for Michelle Williams is in fourth place. Actually, Paulson is fifth place for American Horror Story, so she's in our top five twice. <laughs> okay, it's time for a TV movie. The nominees are All the Way, Behind the Candelabra, Brexit, Deadwood, the movie, Game Change, The Normal Heart, The Tale, Temple Grandin, A Very Murray Christmas, and The Wizard of Lies, and the winner is The Normal Heart. Yeah. And this might be my favorite top three, because sometimes with a decade awards, like whatever is recent sometimes gets a, a boost because it's what people remember the most. But here you've got the Normal Heart one, Behind the Candelabra ranked second, and Game Change finished third. And I feel like that's a really good encapsulation of the decade in TV movies, um, which they're all HBO, which is telling because it feels like HBO is the uh, best TV movie network at this point. Uh, and now it's the limited series, and it uh, starts with American Horror Story. Assassination of Gianni Versace, Black Mirror, Chernobyl, Fargo, Feud, Betty and Joan, People vs. O.J. Simpson, True Detective, Twin Peaks, and When They See Us. And the one I picked won <laughs> for change, People vs. O.J. Simpson. Uh, Chernobyl finished in second, and American Horror Story finished in third. We grouped all of American Horror Story together for these awards rather than, you know, just pulling it apart season, you know, every single season of that show. Um, but this also means, speaking of which, uh, Ryan Murphy swept the uh, uh, long-form categories. Uh, every single one of these awards went to a Ryan Murphy program, three to People vs. OJ, uh, one to Versace, and one to American Horror Story. Uh, interestingly, the same thing happened the last decade. Mike Nichols swept the whole thing with Wit and Angels in America, every single category, so... And Ryan won for a normal heart, too. Mm -hmm. Yep. So moving on to the drama categories. This is drama guest actor of the decade. And the nominees are Dylan Baker, The Good Wife, Cameron Britton, Mind Hunter, Reggie Cathy, House of Cards, Michael J. Fox, The Good Wife, Matthew Good, The Crown, Mark Margolis, Breaking Bad, Gerald McCraney, This Is Us, Robert Morse, Mad Men, Pedro Pascal for Game of Thrones, and Bradley Whitford for The Handmaid's Tale. 
And the Gold Derby Decade Award winner is Pedro Pascal, Game of Thrones. Followed in second place by Cameron Britton in Mindhunter and uh, Mark Margolis in Breaking Bad in third place. I voted for Del McCraney. It, uh, tell me he did okay. Um, define okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know. I don't want to know. <laughs> he finished in the top ten. <laughs> <laughs> He's nominated. Uh, that's that's really good. Yeah, uh, for the decade. Ten honestly. years of drama yeah. programs and drama guest stars of all the decade. He had, he did pretty well. So he's nominated. So that's making lemons out of lemonade. So that's perfect. Uh, okay, drama guest actress. The nominees are Gillian Anderson, American Gods, Allison Brie, Mad Men, Rachel Brosnahan, House of Cards, Ellen Burstyn, House of Cards. Allison Janney, Masters of Sex, uh, Cherry Jones for The Handmaid's Tale, Laurie Metcalf, Horace and Pete, Carrie Preston, The Good Wife, Diana Rigg, Game of Thrones, and Cicely Tyson, How to Get Away with Murder. And the Gold Derby Decade Award winner is Diana Rigg at Game of Thrones. Two in a row for Game of Thrones. Yeah, that was a runaway. Uh, this is actually Diana Riggs' fourth win with us. Uh, she won Drama Guest Actress the Yearly Award, I think, three times uh, uh, over the course of her run on that show. Uh, Cicely Tyson finished second uh, for How to Get Away with Murder, and Allison Janney finished third for Masters of Sex. I'm very glad people remember that performance. I think it's one of the best performances she's ever given, so glad she finished in the top three here. Which brings us to the supporting categories. Uh, drama supporting actor. The nominees are Jonathan Bre Jonathan Banks for Breaking Bad, Nikolai Coster Waldau for uh, Game of Thrones, Peter Dinklage for Game of Thrones, Giancarlo Esposito for Breaking Bad, David Harbour for Stranger Things, John Lithgow for The Crown, Mandy Patinkin for Homeland, Aaron Paul for Breaking Bad. Alexander Skarsgård for Big Little Lies, and John Slattery for Mad Men. And the Gold Derby Decade Award goes to Aaron Paul for Breaking Bad, uh, which this was a strictly two-man race, uh, you know, one and two, uh, Aaron Paul, Breaking Bad, second place, Peter Dinklage, Game of Thrones, uh, it was... The, they had overwhelmingly the most support. Uh, and then third place, perhaps surprisingly, Alexander Skarsgård for uh, Big Little Lies, which I think is probably a little bit of the recency bias there, too. It's funny, at the Emmys, Aaron Paul had, had the record for a long time at three wins, and then Peter Dinklage beat him this year with four wins, but now Aaron Paul you know, overcomes at the Emmy Awards. Well, I mean, the fact that they won seven of the last ten drama supporting <laughs> actor Emmys combined, uh, I, I think that's the best, that's the fitting one and two here. Mm -hmm. Best drama supporting actress, the nominees are Christine Baranski for The Good Wife, Millie Bobby Brown, Stranger Things, Laura Dern, Big Little Lies, Anne Dowd for The Handmaid's Tale, Anna Gunn for Breaking Bad, Lena Headey for Game of Thrones, Christina Hendricks for Mad Men, Tandy Newton for Westworld, Maggie Smith for Downton Abbey, and Maisie Williams for Game of Thrones. And the Decade Award goes to Lena Headey for Game of Thrones. Uh, and this might be my favorite top three, because uh, Anna Gunn finished second for Breaking Bad, and Maggie Smith finished third for Downton Abbey. And I honestly think, uh, as a representation of the decade, that's a pretty good top three. Now we've got Drama Actor, and the nominees are Sterling K. Brown in This With Us, Brian Cranston in Breaking Bad, John Hamm in Mad Men, Hugh Laurie House, Rami Malek, Mr. Robot, Bob Odenkirk, Better Call Saul, Billy Porter, Pose, Matthew Reese, The Re Americans, Kevin Spacey, House of Cards, and Justin Thoreau, The Leftovers. Wow, that's a lineup. And the winner was uh, Brian Cranston in Breaking Bad. That might be the biggest runaway of <laughs> the entire awards. I think he had more votes than the rest of the entire category combined. Wow. Uh, or if not, it was close. Uh, it was, yeah, it was pretty huge. Uh, uh, but John Hamm finished second for Mad Men. Uh, and actually, the reigning Emmy champ, Billy Porter, finished third for Pose. I, Rami Malek finished fourth for Mr. Robot. I think I put him in my top 
uh, three, so I'm glad he made a strong appearance there. Uh, and Matthew Reese rounds out our top five. I, I'm sitting here trying, and I, I wish we had Joyce on because she could tell me instantly which uh, has. Is there any Emmy winner that's not represented in that list for the last decade? Uh, and I don't think there is. But Joyce would know instantly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we've got next drama actress, and the nominees are Amelia Clark, Game of Thrones, Carrie Coon, The Leftovers, Claire Danes, Homeland. Viola Davis, How to Get Away with Murder, Claire Foy, The Crown, Nicole Kidman, Big Little Lies, Tatiana Maslany, Orphan Black, Elizabeth Moss in The Handmaid's Tale, Elizabeth Moss in Mad Men, and Carrie Russell, The Americans. And the winner is Elizabeth Moss in The Handmaid's Tale. Hmm? Uh, another case where vote splitting didn't hurt her, although it came really close, because mm -hmm. uh, this, as Chris alluded to earlier, was our one, one of our one-point categories. Uh, she beat Nicole Kidman in Big Little Lies by wow. a single point. Um, and then, honestly, Claire Foy was really <laughs> close in third place. Top to bottom, first through tenth place are separated by 300 points. Not, not 300 votes, 300 points. So that's basically... Uh, like a hundred ballots, uh, top to bottom, separated this entire category. The closest race overall by far. Uh, Viola Davis was fourth, and Tatiana Maslany was fifth. I would have personally put Tatiana Maslany a little higher, but um, top five and an Emmy ain't bad. Claire Foy led this race for at least the first week, and then and then the other two overtook her. Uh, as we were watching the votes coming in, fifteen hundred people around the world, by the way, voted on these. Uh, which is really, really good. That's more than a lot of your bigger award shows. Um, so drama episode and drama series will round out this genre. A drama episode is represented really by just three or four shows. Uh, you have The Americans with their finale start, Breaking Bad with Felina and Ozymandias. Game of Thrones has three episodes, their battle episode, their reigns episode, and their wins episode. <laughs> Handmaid's Tale with June, The Leftovers with Book of Nora and International Assassin, and Mad Men with Person to Person, which was its finale. And the drama episode winner is Breaking Bad, Ozymandias. Uh, that, yeah, that was a pretty decisive win. Uh, second place was Battle of the Bastards from Game of Thrones, and third place was Reigns of Castamere for Game of Thrones. Um, and, you know, uh, actually, Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones uh, uh, account for the entire top five, because Felina is fourth, and then Winds of Winter from Game of Thrones is fifth. <laughs> Drama series, The Americans, Big Little Lies, Breaking Bad, The Crown, Downton Abbey, Game of Thrones, The Handmaid's Tale, The Leftovers, Mad Men, and Stranger Things, you, you really couldn't get a better lineup of what represented this past decade right there. And we felt like going in without knowing, but just guessing that it, this would be a real battle between Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones. And it certainly was, and the winner is Breaking Bad. Yeah. yeah, Game of Thrones and Breaking Bad, it's just like drama supporting actor, this was a two-show race at the top, uh, dominating the votes, but uh, Mad Men uh, finished third, quite deservedly so, I think. Um, uh, and then the top five rounded out by Stranger Things and Big Little Lies. Mad Men straddled the two decades, so it didn't win last decade, and it didn't win this decade. Yeah. If it had been more of a dominant force in either one, it probably would have. Yeah. And the thing is, it had its its strongest awards period was early in its run. So right. Breaking Bad finished strong. So I think that's why it was remembered uh, more strongly here. Well, next is comedy. And we start with guest actor. Matt Damon, 30 Rock. John Hamm, 30 Rock. John Hamm again for Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Neil Patrick Harris for Glee. Luke Kirby, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Nathan Lane, Modern Family, Peter McNichol, Veep, Bob Newhart, The Big Bang Theory, Paul Rudd, Parks and Recreation, and Ben Schwartz, Parks and Recreation, and Ben Schwartz won. 
Mm -hmm. uh, this was a close race. This was down to 14 points. Uh, ben Schwartz over Paul Rudd uh, for Parks and Recreation in second place. And then John Hamm uh, for 30 Rock and John Hamm for Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt in fourth place. Uh, so, And John Hamm was separated from himself by about 25 points. Um, and Peter McNichol rounds it out the top five. It should be noted that, as we mentioned earlier, the Saturday Night Live contestants, or contestants, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, contenders were in uh, our variety races, so uh, these categories do not include SNL, so if you don't find them here, that is why. And next, it's the ladies for guest actress. Christine Baranski, The Big Bang Theory. Kristen Chenoweth. Glee, Carrie Fisher, oh, <laughs> Catastrophe, Katherine Hahn, Parks and Recreation, Megan Mullally, Parks and Re Recreation, Gwyneth Paltrow, Glee, Sally Phillips, Veep, Maya Rudolph, The Good Place, Elaine Stritch, 30 Rock, and Kristen Scott Thomas for Fleabag, and the winner is Maya Rudolph for The Good Place. Mm -hmm. She won uh, the yearly award from us twice in a row, so now she's taken the decade. Um, Megan Mullally finished second for Parks and Recreation, and the late great Elaine Stritch uh, finished third for 30 Rock. And this was a pretty close race. Maya Rudolph and Megan Mullally were fairly like tied together. Uh, less than 30 points separated them first and second. <clears throat> okay, moving on to supporting actor in a comedy series, and the nominees, <clears throat> sorry, the nominees are Andre Brower, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Titus Burgess, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, Ty Burrell, Modern Family, Adam Driver, Girls, Tony Hale, Veep, <laughs> Neil Patrick <laughs> Harris, How, How I Met Your Mother, Nick Offerman, Parks and Recreation, Andrew Scott for Fleabag, Eric Stone Street, Modern Family, and Henry Winkler for Barry. And the winner is someone who never won the Emmy, Titus Burgess, Kimmy Schmidt. Yeah, never won the Emmy, but has only ever lost one Gold Derby Award race. Uh, and that was this year's uh, comedy supporting actor race. He lost to, um, to Andrew Scott for Fleabag, but he won that previously four times from us. This is his fifth win for Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Uh, but this is a close race between him and Nick Offerman. Uh, Nick Offerman finished second. He was less than uh, 20 points, at, less than 15 points, actually, out of uh, first place. Uh, and then uh, a very close third, actually, Tony Hale for Veep. And supporting actress in the comedy, Alex Borstein, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Julie Bowen, Modern Family, Allison Brie, Community, Darcy Carden, The Good Place, Anna Klumski for Veep, Sean Clifford for Fleabag, Olivia Coleman for Fleabag, Jane Krakowski, 30 Rock, Jane Lynch, Glee, and Jessica Walter for Arrested Development. And the Gold Derby Decade Award winner is Jane Lynch for Glee. And this was the award. Mm -hmm. Oh, another Ryan. Yeah, it's another Ryan Murphy win. And this was the other pointer that, um, uh, uh, Chris alluded to, uh, Jane Lynch finished one point ahead of Jane Krakowski for 30 Rock. Um, and Alex Borstein rounded out our top three for Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. But this was another category where every single nominee had a pretty like healthy amount of support. Uh, Darcy Carden, our two-time winner, uh, yearly winner for Comedy Supporting Actress, finished fourth. Anna Klumski finished fifth. And that brings us to the lead acting categories for comedy. The nominees for Best Comedy Actor are Aziz Ansari for Master of None, Alec Baldwin for 30 Rock, Jason Bateman for Arrested Development, Steve Carell for The Office, Ted Danson for The Good Place, Donald Glover for Atlanta, Bill Hader for Barry, William H. Macy for Shameless, Jim Parsons for The Big Bang Theory, and Andy Samberg for Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And the award goes to Steve Carell for The Office, uh, which was another interesting one. That straddles the decades, too, but the vast majority of his work on The Office was in the 2000s, but he lost that one to Alec Baldwin, 
Uh, here, Alec Baldwin did finish in our top three. It was Steve Carell at number one, Bill Hader for Barry at number two, and Alec Baldwin for 30 Rock at number three. Um, so Steve Carell really won here for about a year and a half of work at the beginning of the decade, uh, including his farewell wow. episode, which he lost the Emmy for. Uh, <laughs> not that I'm still bitter, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, even though even though he most of his work was in the 2000s, I think having the two decades, uh, Alec Baldwin and Steve Carell being the two comedy actors of the 21st century, uh, I think that that fits. Mm -hmm. Uh, for Best Comedy Actress, the nominees are Kristen Bell for The Good Place, Rachel Brosnahan for The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Laura Dern for Enlightened, Tina Fey for 30 Rock, Allison Janney for Mom, Lisa Kudrow for The Comeback, Julie Louis-Dreyfus for Veep, Catherine O'Hara for Schitt's Creek, Amy Poehler for Parks and Recreation, and Phoebe Waller-Bridge for Fleabag. And pr probably not a surprise, Julie Louis-Dreyfus wins this for Veep. Um, to go with the, the three yearly awards she won from us, uh, Amy Poehler finished second, and Phoebe Waller-Bridge finished third. So that's a pretty great power list of like writer, producer, actors in there. Uh, Tina Fey finished fourth for 30 Rock. She won the, de the previous decade award. Um, Rachel Brosnahan rounds out the top five. Uh, so yeah, there's uh, Julia and... Uh, yeah, not not a surprise given how she dominated the Emmys and did quite well at our awards. So the top ten comedy episodes of the decade are two from Atlanta, uh, B A N and Teddy Perkins, uh, Ronnie slash Lily from Barry, Modern Warfare on Community, two episodes from Fleabag, the season two premiere and the final episode of season two, uh, Janet's on the Good Place. The pilot of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, a Thanksgiving episode on Master of None, and an episode called Veep from Veep. And the winner of the comedy episode of the decade is the season two premiere of Fleabag. And this was a category where I think recency uh, came the most in. I think most of these nominees came from the last two or three years of television. Um, and second place was Veep uh, for its finale episode. And third place was the pilot of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. And the Comedy Series Award, the 10 nominees are Atlanta, Barry, Fleabag, The Good Plates, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Modern Family, The Office, Parks and Recreation, 30 Rock, and Veep. And the winner is Veep. Another uh, female-driven top three. Actually, the same top three as Comedy Actress, though in a slightly different order. Fleabag finished second, and Parks and Recreation finished third. Uh, then 30 Rock and The Office in fourth. And fifth. I think Modern Family should have done a little bit more. I mean, it, it literally yeah. was okay. I think I think Modern Family had the Mad Men issue where its strongest years were at the beginning, and then by the end it was petering out in terms of awards and you know sort of mm -hmm. fan appreciation. Uh, so yeah, I, in terms of the decade, I do think it's underrepresented here. Well, next up is Ensemble of the Decade, which sounds very important to me. So <laughs> anyway, and the nominees are American Horror Story, Big Little Lies. Breaking Bad, Downton Abbey, Game of Thrones, Mad Men, Orange is the New Black, Parks and Recreation, 30 Rock, and Veep. And the winner is Game of Thrones. Followed by Breaking Bad in second place and Big Little Lies in third place. There was that strong Big Little Lies contingent that uh, put it in the top three of a few categories. Um, I think the Game of Thrones win makes sense here because I think over the course of its eight seasons, that show pretty much cast the entire population of Europe. So <laughs> congratulations, Europe. And like parts of like South America, it's like, so congratulations, Europe, on winning the, is that the, the best ensemble. Well, we're not done yet, but is that the series with the most wins in this? Um, yes, a tie. It's tied. Both that and, and uh, okay. Breaking Bad have. Uh, four awards apiece. Oh, okay. We just have one category left. It's Performer of the Decade, and this is for, we don't attach a show to their name because it could be for anything they did over the course of the decade, series, 
movies, limited series, variety talk appearances, hosting SNL, um, Christmas parades, whatever they did over the course <laughs> of the decade. And some of these nominees did all of the above. <laughs> well, the first one did not, Amy Adams. And then we have the other not. She just did one project, you know, um, uh, if you don't count talk show appearances. Anyway, Brian Cranston, we love Amy Adams, but maybe not this category. Uh, Brian Cranston, Tina Fey, Donald Glover, Bill Hader, Jessica Lang, Julia Louis Dreyfus, Elizabeth Moss, Sarah Paulson, and Amy Poehler. And the winner of Performer of the Decade is Brian Cranston. Yeah, and this was a pretty close race, uh, first and second, uh, between him and Sarah Paulson in second place. Uh, Julie Louis Dreyfus finished third, and honestly, this top five is kind of just rock stars, all of them, because fourth was Jessica Lang, and fifth was Elizabeth Moss. And if you think about the decade of television, if you don't think about at least one of those people uh, from the last 10 years, then you probably have been watching television. So this is a really fantastic top five. Do you recall who won last uh, performer of the decade? Was it John Tina Stewart? Fey. Tina Fey. Oh, Tina Fey. Mm. So really, she's had a 20-year run, considering she was oh, wow. in yeah. of those decade award. Yeah, awards. and she created Kimmy Schmidt, which won for Titus this year. So. Right, right. Well, thank you, everybody. I hope you voted as part of the 1,500 around the world that voted. And uh, we will do, here's how this uh, next process will work on film. Right after the first of the year, you can vote for this year's film awards. Um, and then right as soon as the Oscars are over, you can vote for film decade awards. Uh, so that'll be across you know, 2010 through 2019 on film. Right now, you can go in the Prediction Center and do your predictions for Oscars, Golden Globes, SAG Awards, Grammys, CMAs, uh, reality shows. There's a lot of stuff to predict right now. We're going to add some of the Guild Awards coming up soon. We'll add the uh, some of the Film Critics Awards coming up soon. So please do that. And uh, thank you for watching today.